And um, many, many wonderful shows and movies, films are done right here on the lot. And next month we'll be celebrating six years right here at CBS Studios. Yes, to God be all the glory. So, this is a very, very, very important word. And I want every one of you to be seated and I want everybody to listen. If you're going to go grab popcorn while you're watching, your pizza, whatever, take a minute, grab your water, whatever you're doing, because this is a very, very, very important message that God downloaded to me when I was feeling very dark. I was in a dark, depressed place, and someone mentioned this story to me. But before I tell you this incredible story, I'm going to take you back to where David, in the Bible, cried out to God. Because David was a warrior for the Lord. David knew that the Lord loved him. But he went through so many trials and so many problems and so many issues and so many heartaches and so many struggles that in Psalms 13 verse 1 through 6, David cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, how long, O Lord, how long are you going to forget me forever? He really thought that God had forgotten him forever. This is a man that knew better. But he was going on and on and on. Tonight's topic is about the bird who lost his song. Proverbs 18.14 says the spirit of a man and a woman can endure sickness. Your own spirit. You're going to survive. You can endure sickness. In the NIV version, it means sustain. You can sustain. You will be sustained during sickness. But a broken spirit, who can bear that? Mm. Proverbs 17, verse 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit, there it is again, and the NIV version means crushed, when it talks about being broken, a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Psalms 34, 18, the Lord is near, listen, but the Lord is near to the heartbroken. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So there is a time of deliverance. There is a time of being rescued. There is a time of being relieved from your pain. Be it emotionally, physically, mentally, financially, romantically, spiritually. There is a time of healing for your pain. Psalms uh, 147 verse 3 says, He, the Lord, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Mm, the Amplified Version means healing their pain and comforting their sorrow. This is what is promised. This is in the Word of God. This is not make-belief. This is not something that just came out of the sky and dropped into my lap. This is from the Word, the Holy Word of God. Now, you out there, we are non-denominational. We have all types of mixed religions that are watching this show or watching this meeting, excuse me, and watching um, right here what goes on at CBS Studios. But I personally am non-denominational. Which means I do read the Holy Bible. Yes, there's only one Bible. The Holy Bible. There's many translations, which is easier to understand, which is the Amplified Version. I use that a lot. NIV, the New International Version. NAS, New American Standard Version. There's so many easy to understand versions. 
So if you have the King James Version, which I do refer to, the old King James, there's the new King James. So whenever I, the Lord downloads a message to me, I study all the way across. I want to make sure that you get it, that whatever the Lord downloads, that you can understand it. So that you don't walk away or you don't shut down and say, what was that? What did that mean? I want to make sure that you know that I believe in God the Father, God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And every message. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. As an actress and producer, people are thinking, oh, don't you think that would hurt your career? No, and if it did, oh well, because I serve the almighty God. He is my provider. He's the one that brings the jobs. It is he who delivers me from all evil. So I don't care. You can judge. You can hate. Whatever. God bless you. I send you many blessings. But I will believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And when you hear anything, it's from the Word. It is not a fake, phony Bible, a pretend Bible. It is the Word of God. He is my rock. He is my refuge, and He is my deliverer. And He is your deliverer. And He promises that. You who are brokenhearted, you who have lost your song, you who have been so crushed and so broken in your lives, the Lord wants to deliver you tonight, right now. Wherever you're walking, it may be daytime. The Lord says, enough is enough. He is here to deliver you if you would only believe. Hallelujah. Only believe. There's a story about a bird, this beautiful bird, that used to have the most incredible voice. And he would sit in his huge cage, and he would sit on his perch, and he would just sing away, just sing like a songbird. He was such a happy bird. He was a wonderful pet. One day, his owner, she was cleaning his cage, cleaning out the bottom of his cage. And she used a vacuum, a hose, to clean out his, you know, I guess the droppings, the seeds, or whatever. And she had left the, the door open to this big cage. Of course, while she's cleaning it out, he's singing. All of a sudden, she turns around, starting to do her chores. She leaves the door open. And as she's vacuuming around, she realizes she looks, the cage is empty. So she panics. She's frantic. She goes looking all through the house, screaming for her bird, yelling and saying and calling his name, where are you? Where are you? No bird. No song. No singing. No bird. She knew she didn't leave the windows open the house. But there was no bird. Couldn't find him anywhere. As she's searching for him, she's crying because she loved him, could not find him. She continues on, I guess after a period of time of searching high and low, upstairs, downstairs, all around, and no bird. She decides to finish her cleaning and was going to revisit that. As she opens up her vacuum cleaner, there was her bird in the midst of all the dirt, the debris, the filth. There was the precious darling songbird. He had been sucked up by mistake, went through the hose, the tube, and down into the vacuum, the vortex of dirt and debris. She panics. She's like, oh my goodness. She freaks out. She tries to revive him. He was so dirty. Cleans him off. He opens his, his eyes. He's alive. He's alive. She's so happy. 
She's like, yes, you're alive. Oh my gosh, my mommy, mommy's so sad. Mommy, sorry. And puts him back on his perch after cleaning him off. Puts him back where he was. Carefully closes the door. So happy her songbird is back in his place. But something really tragic happened. Even though he was put back in his safe place. That bird was so traumatized by that horrific situation. He never sang again. He lost his voice, he lost his song, he lost his will to sing. Even though it was not his mommy's fault, it was a grand mistake. But it was so devastating for him that he became permanently paralyzed with pain and shook and was afraid for the rest of his life, never said it again. The Lord has shown me that I need to share this message with you because some of you here and some of you out there who are watching have lost your song. You've been through so much heartache, so much pain, so much devastation, so many disappointments, betrayals by a family member, betrayals by a, what you thought was a best friend, the loss of a loved one. And financially went down the rabbit hole financially in deeper debt and deeper debt and lost your finances, you've lost your health. You've lost your desire to live. The Lord wants to give you your song back. Yes. You can get your song back. Did you know that? Yes. The Lord promises that he will give you a new song in your heart. As you pray to him, as you praise him, he will place a new song in your heart. You will sing again. You will laugh again. You will dance again. Yes. Those of you who have gone through great losses, you will. Sometimes healing takes place immediately. And sometimes it's a process. How many of you in this building and out there have had a similar experience. There you go, the whole place, all of us. You can't see it, but just about every single person in this building, if they're being honest, has lost their song at one point or another, or maybe right now trying to get their song back, trying to get up every morning just to brush their teeth, it's an effort just to get dressed and get in your car and go to work. Is that you? Is that you? If it is, have peace and know that the Lord wants to heal you. He wants to bless you. He wants to comfort you. He wants to give you your new song. And I encourage you to read Psalms the whole chapter of Psalms 96. Those of you who are at home, if you own a Bible, turn to Psalms 96. If you don't own a Bible, we have something called modern technology. You can go on your iPhone, your iPad, or your computer and look up. You can Google Psalms. Google the Bible and look up Psalms 96. Only God, only God is able to readjust this kind of thinking. 
and he can put you on a new path of golden God opportunities. He can turn things all around for you in a split second. What a difference a day makes. That's not just a song. It is the truth. What a difference. Do you know about 99.9% .9 of everyone who has committed suicide, their miracle was right around the corner, a day away. A week away if they had just hung on a little longer and waited for their breakthrough. In Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for our good. Right, Linda? All things, all things work together for our good. Yes, that includes even the calamity, even the tragedy. The heartache, the sorrow, the losses, the Lord promises all things work together for your good. And you go, how can that happen? I don't know. I'm not God. Why don't you ask God? He has all kinds of great things up his big white sleeves. If you will only believe, talk to him, spend more time with him. Because in his presence, is fullness of joy. Yeah. So if you call me up and you're whining about something else again, that tells me that you haven't spent any time in his presence because there's fullness of joy. No matter how bad your, your sadness is, no matter how deep you were sucked into that dark vortex of depression, the Lord God is your strength. He is your savior. He is your refuge. He is your stronghold. So try God before you try calling your BFF. Try calling God. Get on your knees and hit the floor and say, Lord, Abba Father, help me, Daddy God. What do I do? How long do I have to go through this? Cry out to him like David did. Tell him your burdens. Tell him your cares. Cry out to Daddy God. Get in his presence. Because remember, in his presence is what? Thank you. Fullness of joy. So don't you want to be in his presence? Don't you want to get your song back? Don't you want to move forward with your life? It is time right now. Get out of the pity party. The woe is me syndrome doesn't work with God. He only works when you praise him. Hallelujah. When you praise him, it releases the angels of God's army to surround you with glory, with his presence, with his favor. He will open doors for you that you can't even think about opening. He will just blow your mind with great news. Great favor, great opportunities, if you will only just trust him and turn your life back to him. A lot of you have been angry, you're bitter, you've turned your back on God because you're not happy with the life that you are now leading. And a lot of you have said, well, look at the pile of stuff that I'm in the middle of. Look what I'm in the middle of. But you know what the whole thing is? You're in the middle of right where you're supposed to be right now. Because the Lord is using this as a stepping stone to elevate you higher and higher and higher. So that you no longer have to be in the dirt, dirty, in the filth, in the crying, in the tears, in the misery. He wants you to get all brushed off cleaned up. He wants you to sit on your perch and sing because he doesn't want you to lose your voice forever. He understands. He's a God of understanding. He knows. He created us. We're flesh and blood. He created us. Did you know he knows every hair on your head? And for some of you guys who have no hair, he knew every hair you had on your head. 
I had to say that. Or not. So, since he created you, and he's the one that has known you since your mother's womb, don't you think he knows how sad you are? Don't you think he knows your whole situation? Don't you think he knows you just got sucked up into this another vortex of loneliness, sorrow, depression, chaos, confusion, pandemonium? Some of you have opened the door to it. Some of you actually have opened the door to the chaos and confusion and you're blaming God. Could that be your case? Sometimes if you look back and you go, wow, yeah, I did. I saw the warning signs and I should have cut that person loose a long time ago. But you let them just stay in and drain you and drain you and pull, them, pull you down with them. God wants you to have wisdom. He wants to give you godly discernment. He wants to give you happiness. Are you suffering from your own silent storm? Think about it. Is there something in your life, you don't need to say it out loud here, but is there something in your life that is riding on you right now? That's hanging on you like a heavy weight. Someone, something piggybacking on your life that you need to shake yourself from. You need to cut loose, cut free from that heavy weight. Are you suffering way too long? Do you feel like David going, where are you, Lord? Maybe you have lost your song. Sing to the Lord, sing to the Lord. And when you sing, something magical happens here on earth. The Lord told me, because I said, why is music so important to you, Lord? Because we've done sermons on singing and music. The stars even sing, the planets sing. Everything that God has created makes a tune. Amen. Music and singing is important to the Lord. That's why you see singing. Sing, sing unto the Lord, praise him, sing unto the Lord, praise him, because he likes it. Hello? Hello. He put it in the Bible, sing unto him. Yes. If you don't know any great songs, just sing, make up, make up songs, because the Lord told me that singing here on earth reaches the gates of heaven and breaks down all the walls on earth you, as you God. send your voice up to heaven's gates he will tear down all the blockages and stoppages the walls for you here on earth Hallelujah. you need to get your song back Hallelujah. there's going to be many memories and many scars of the past Anytime you get cut, anytime you get wounded, there's a scar, right? They're going to be there. It's called life. Battle wounds. Welcome to earth. Everybody goes through their stuff. But the Lord doesn't want you to stay in the stuff. He wants to bless you. He loves you so much. He wants to deliver you. As our prayer warriors are coming forward right now, prayer warriors, will you come forward right now? Can we stand? Can we stand? Can we stand? Prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. Ron Moore, will you come forward, please, and help us pray? Don Ablett, would you come forward and help us pray? Aaron and Randy Clark? Thank you. The Lord says in Psalms 
you got to read Psalms also 146 and 147. It's a prayer of deliverance. It's a beautiful prayer of deliverance that David spoke and sang. Psalms 146 and 147. And in Psalms 40, verse 3. In Psalms 40, verse 3. The Lord will give you your song back. At the end of every meeting, every service, we like to offer up the RSVP prayer. If you're not sure that your name is written in God's big book, just repeat this prayer after me. It's called the RSVP prayer to heaven. If you've never said this prayer, if you're not really sure, you might have gone to church as a kid, maybe your parents believed, but that doesn't mean that you believed. Maybe your sister, your brother believed. You need to pray personally. You need to RSVP to be on God's big guest list in his big, big reservation book. And it's called the Book of Life, the Lamb's Book of Life. He said, tell everyone that heaven is like any nice event here on earth. Anytime you get invited to a nice event, you must RSVP, right? Or your name's not written in the guest book. And there's no reserved seat. And you just don't get in. He said, heaven is exactly the same way. He says, I wish that no one perish. He said, no matter what your religion, no matter what your race, he wants everyone to RSVP out of their own mouth so he can write your name in his book and reserve you a seat. Makes sense, doesn't it? That's a big event, heaven. That's one you don't want to miss. That's called forever. That's where your real estate is, forever and ever. So if you're not sure that you're in the book, let's just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. As I forgive all those who sin against me, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who died for me and arose for me, so that I can spend eternity with you, Lord. Please put my name in your book and reserve me a seat as I follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've said that prayer for the first time, we'd love to hear from you. Just contact us. Go to leebenton.org. Or you can email us at lee, L-E-E, -E, at leebenton.org. Lee at leebenton.org is the email. We love you. God bless you. Until next month, we pray that you get your song back. Amen. We'll see you soon. Hallelujah. Thank you.